Time travel is not about changing the direction of time, but about getting space-time itself to take you back into the past. If this is space-time, and B is later than A, then the only way of getting back to A is if there's a loop in space-time. You're late. I knew you would be. <laughs> Sir? I have a time quake approaching. Paradox. Time quake approaching. Four, three. A paradox, Louise. You've changed the past. Now you know damn well we can't change the past. It catches up with us. A common argument against the possibility of time travel is called the grandfather paradox. The idea is this. The time traveler gets in his time machine, he goes back into time, he shoots to death his grandfather before his grandfather has a chance to father his father. Therefore, the time traveler cannot exist because his father never existed. Therefore, since the time traveler doesn't exist, he can't go back into time and shoot his grandfather. We obviously have a logical contradiction Many people have thought in the past this has ruled out the possibility of time travel. If it is possible to build a time machine, surely people in the future would have used it to travel into the past. But since no one has seen any tourists from the future, some take this as further evidence that time travel is impossible. Although the grandfather paradox would seem to rule out time travel, this is not the end of the story. So far, we have confined ourselves to Einstein's view of space-time. To see why time travel is possible, we have to take into account the strange implications of quantum theory. At present, our best theory of matter and energy, and indeed reality, is quantum theory. At the most straightforward level, this allows us to predict how things like electrons, atoms, and light interact with each other. For instance, the transistors in your television set were designed using quantum theory. Quantum physics really is an extremely successful theory at, at describing the whole of atomic physics and subatomic physics. And all sorts of things in daily life actually depend on quantum mechanics, the whole communications industry, television sets, radio sets, digital wristwatch, nuclear power for that matter. All these things are very much quantum mechanical. And parts of the theory have been tested to a phenomenal degree of accuracy, one part in a billion, that sort of, uh, that sort of size. But also, it must be said, it has some very peculiar features about the picture of reality which it portrays. In my most recent work, I have been looking at how quantum theory could be applied to a hypothetical computer which calculated according to the principles of quantum mechanics. I did a calculation assuming that time travel was possible. As part of that calculation, I took information from the output of the quantum computer and fed it to the input before it had even left the output. Now, if time travel into the past was impossible, the result of my calculation should have been a contradiction. I'd expected a paradox, but surprisingly, I didn't find one. Time and again, my results showed that nothing bad happens if information goes back into the past. It all works perfectly. And if information can do it, there's no theoretical reason why human beings couldn't time travel as well. It was quantum theory that allowed the message in my quantum computer to go back in time. The explanation for why this is possible relies on one of the most bizarre ideas of quantum theory, the many worlds interpretation. Well, the many worlds interpretation of, of quantum mechanics is, is, is very peculiar uh, in the following respect. That first of all, one has to say that all of quantum mechanics deals with probabilities of things happening. It's like tossing a coin. He says it's the fundamental property of nature. 
Now, when you actually toss a coin, of course, usually you toss it, it comes down heads or tails. Now, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is that when you come to the analogous operation in quantum theory, there is a real sense in which both possibilities actually occur. So rather than doing either this or that, you get both. And these are thought of sometimes as being, therefore, different worlds. It is as if, if you like, the universe has branched or split at that point into the two copies of itself, one where it's come up heads, one where it's come up tails. Taken literally, the equations of quantum mechanics say that each time the pinball hits a bumper, it bounces off in all possible directions. Consequently, the ball follows many different lines in space-time, all of which actually happen. But if all these life histories are actually happening, the obvious questions are, where are they, and why do we see only one? Well, according to the many worlds interpretation, all the life histories do actually happen, but each occurs in its own separate parallel universe. We only ever see one universe because there is almost no communication between the parallel universes. They each proceed on their independent ways, along with their copies of you, me, the pinball, and the world. What holds for the pinball machine holds for the universe as a whole. Reality, then, does not consist of one universe, but of a multiverse, comprising a large number of broadly similar parallel universes. The many worlds interpretation of quantum physics is one of these things that generates intense emotion amongst theoretical physicists. Some are very much in favor, some are very much against. But there is one uh, domain of physics where it's almost, I think, obligatory, and that's quantum cosmology. Quantum cosmologists use quantum theory to study the way space and time behave from the creation of the universe onwards. They rely on the many worlds interpretation in their calculations. The many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics sounds completely bizarre. Even to most physicists, it seems absolutely crazy that there could be other copies of ourselves out there with which we could never interact and never see. However, there is one field of physics in which the majority of practitioners believe in the many worlds interpretation. That's quantum cosmology. A poll was conducted amongst the leading quantum cosmologists in the world, and an overwhelming majority of these people said that they believed in the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. The field equations of quantum cosmology force us to believe in the many worlds interpretation. Not quite clear, is it? I can see by your face that you're not certain. You don't understand. It's part of the normal process of science to be deeply skeptical of radical new theories. But it's wrong for scientists not to take a theory seriously just because it seems outrageous. 360 years ago, the Inquisition threatened Galileo with torture because he claimed that the Earth was rotating. To the Inquisition, it was obvious from personal experience that the Earth doesn't move. But here at the Science Museum, the slow turning of this Foucault pendulum shows that Galileo was right. In everyday situations, it doesn't matter whether the existence of parallel universes is taken seriously just as it doesn't matter whether the rotation of the Earth is taken seriously. But some concepts, like time travel, only make sense if the parallel universes really do exist. 